Welcome, I'm Jacob from the product team here at Databricks. Uh, this lightning talk will be about Python EDFs and UDD catalog uh, for all your lake house. Um, before we start, uh, our lawyers told me to say things might change. Um, one thing that will not change is that we believe that the best data warehouse is lake house. And we also believe that the best data warehouse goes beyond SQL. And let me quickly explain what I mean by that, um, by means of a running example. So just really simple, let's say you have super awesome data that you want to make available for, for all your users. Um, and it's, for in this example, you, you have a, a bunch of columns, an ID, a customer name, but also you gather some streaming data, let's say customer actions, um, that has uh, JSON in it. And it has the phone number, it has kind of the action that's happening, it has the email, it can have other uh, in information as well. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this sensitive information is not hitting users that you don't want to see them. So what you want to do is you want to redact the sensitive information in this attributes column. Um, of course, you want to do that as easy as possible and you want to make it readily available for all your users. So you want to give all of your, your data scientists, engineers, analysts, you want to give them access to the data. Um, so that one means to that end could be Python UDFs and UDD catalog. Uh, and I'm going to explain you what it is, but let's quickly start off. Why, what are UDFs uh, and why Python? Um, UDFs is essentially a way uh, for you to bring in custom logic uh, into Spark uh, and make that piece reusable for others uh, or yourself. Uh, and today you can do that. Um, you can create SQL UDFs um, for, let's say, a SQL warehouse or you can create session-based uh, Python UDFs for, say, your Spark workloads on interactive clusters, but you cannot do both. Um, what we were talking here about is UDFs that are stored and managed in Unity Catalog and at the same time leverage Python. By leverage Python, you get a couple of benefits um, beyond SQL, uh, which is you get the expressiveness and flexibility of Python, of course, uh, including the ability to network calls. So this is something that is completely new if you're doing it on a SQL warehouse. You can build on top of open source libraries, so you do not have to reinvent the wheels, but you can readily uh, reuse those, uh, which also applies to if you have code that you've already written in Python or that someone else in your organization has written in Python and make that available as a UDF um, for, for you or maybe even other users. Uh, and of course, you get access to all the Python developer tools. So if you have some Q&A pipeline, CI/CD pipeline that you apply to your Python code, you, you, may, you, you made sure that that Python code is of high quality, works as expected, Deploying that will still apply to the same Python code. Awesome. Um, so how does it work? So instead of me talking through you, uh, let me show how that actually works. So what you see in this short demo of how to create it is, uh, I create a new query um, in, this, in the SQL editor, and I connect it to a, to a pro warehouse, DB SQL warehouse. Um, yeah, and the first thing is to create the UDF. You do like a create function, uh, and then you specify the third level, a uh, three level namespace for your function, which I call redact, uh, and the input parameters, which is a string, and the function will also return a string. Uh, now, what you could do so far is like a SQL as a language, but what's new is you can also say, okay, this UDF is of language Python, and then you can start adding your Python code. So for this example, we are importing the JSON package because we're doing some JSON modifications. And then we essentially specify the redaction logic, which is, okay, if there is a key called phone or email uh, in this JSON, JSON blob that I'm just going to parse, uh, I go through that JSON blob, look for those keys, and if the key exists in the JSON, uh, I replace that by a new string, which is called redacted. Um, so that's basically it. And then, because this is UDF, that returns a string. Uh, well, it should also just return a string. And you're good to go. You execute that statement, and from there on, this function is available in Unity Catalog um, for all your workload. Okay. Let me just quickly fix that. Okay. Now, okay. Now you have this UDF. What do you do with it? How do you use it? Um, there are multiple ways. Um, the easiest, most straightforward is you just essentially directly query it from. Yeah, from a query. You directly use it in a query. So wherever you use your SQL function or your SQL UDF, you could now use that function. Um, because I'm already using the same scheme and catalog, I can just call it redact here. If it's from a different catalog, you would need to, to use the fully qualified name, which is, I think I call it usage data default redact. But that is how you use it directly from a query. But being a UDF in SQL, you can use it anywhere you can use a function which also includes views. So let's say we want to create a view with this UDF or based on this UDF. 
Um, we create a new view and in the select statement of that view we use that UDF and it will be available in that view and you can then make users uh, give access you give users access to that view. One neat thing with UDFs is uh, as they behave as any other function, you can change function you can change functions. So let's imagine you have two fun functions. The one is to redact the phone and the other is to redact, to redact the email. You can of course uh, mix and match those functions and you can redact the email first and then call another function. This kind of comes in handy if you combine it with other like built-in functions like secrets. So you can pass in Databricks secrets into the functions or other SQL um, attributes, constants, whatever's uh, helping for you. The name of the column you want to redact. Um, okay. Um, so far we talked about how you create a UDF, how you use it. Um, and I give, I give you the example in terms of Databricks SQL, a warehouse. But we really said this is for all your lakehouse. What does this mean? What it means is that you can call or create Python UDFs from anywhere in the lakehouse. What it means you can use it on a SQL warehouse, it supports on pro and serverless, or from an interactive cluster, be that a single user cluster or a shared cluster. The only qualifier here is that it has to be a Unity Catalog enabled cluster because that UDF is stored and managed and governed in Unity Catalog. So this enables all your data science, ML, AI, analytics, and automatic, automated workflows, DLT and jobs to use that UDF. And you can really mix and match however you want it. So you can create the UDF on a SQL warehouse, use it in a job, use it on a shared cluster. It doesn't matter. It's once it's in Unity Catalog and all of those compute resources can put it into Unity Catalog. It's available for all your lake house. Uh, and those are persisted, of course. So once created, um, they are available across ses sessions. So when you when you terminate your warehouse, when you reset your warehouse, a different warehouse, it will be there. And you can, if you will, share it across workspaces. So you can have it created in, in one workspace A and then grant permissions of users from the other workspace and they can reuse that as well. Uh, in terms, if you wondered how to discover them, how to find them, uh, there are two ways. The one is you can use system tables uh, where you essentially, here I provide this example where you can select uh, all the UDFs that have a name which, is, which contains redact, but you can also do other things. You can uh, look up comments, you can look up the catalog and so on. Uh, and what's coming really soon is you can also do it in the UI in the Data Explorer. So where you see the schema and the tables, uh, you will see the functions as well. So you can do that in the UI as well, as well as in the search. Awesome, okay. Um, Talking about Unity, we of course also talk about governance and security and what does this all means for you, mean for you. Well, the, the idea here is that you can share your UDS really among users with a full governance. So in order, for instance, when I create this redact UDF and I want to share it across the org and all workspaces, uh, all I have to do is grant usage on the catalog and schema I created in, as well as grant execute on the function itself and it will be available. And of course you can revoke those grants uh, as well later on. It just works like a normal SQL, SQL permission in this case. The other thing that is, uh, uh, that is worth mentioning is that some of the compute resources that we talked about, like a SQL warehouse or a shared Unity catalog cluster, really have multiple concurrent users operating uh, at the same time. So what's important here is that we enforce all the UC governance rules also for the UDS and we have to execute the UDF uh, in a proper isolation. And this is guaranteed because those are executed in a sandbox environment that is, uh, that is launched and executed in parallel to the Spark execution nodes. So this makes sure that the Python code that users write do not access any other user's data or anything they should not access, but they of course have access to a temporary disk and they can access the network. Awesome. Um, this was a very short, uh, short talk and I want to give you uh, time for answers. So let's quickly recap uh, and I, I tell you more where we stand with this feature. Um, first, as I said, you can leverage now Python for your UDS and UD catalog. You get all the goodness of Python, the Python developer tools, the open source libraries and your own code. You can use it for all your lakehouse, so it doesn't matter where you create it um, and when you create it. Once it's there, it is there until you drop the function again uh, and you can share them all, all your users thanks to Unity Catalog governance and security, including the sandbox uh, isolation. This will, be available from the, uh, this will be available roughly next week uh, with DBR 13.2 for all your clusters and, and jobs, uh, as well as later this year for DB SQL warehouses. If you want to have it for DB SQL warehouses right now, we have a preview going. Uh, you can hit this link and sign up for it and we will enable it for the workspaces that you wanted to use.